Hello and welcome back my friends. If you're new here, my name is Laura and I usually make videos about hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome to help educate, raise awareness, and share my experiences and advice living with this condition. But today I am straying away from my usual hypermobile EDS content to talk about spondylodysplastic Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. This will be the last video of my rare subtype series where I give each of the 12 rarer subtypes of EDS their own introductory educational video. I have 11 videos out in this series already, so please go check them out if you're interested. So what exactly is spondylodysplastic Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Spondylodysplastic EDS, also known as SPEDS, is an extremely rare condition that causes changes in bone growth, low muscle tone, joint hypermobility, which is when joints move past a normal range of motion, joint contractures, which are permanent stiffening of joints that limit their range of motion, and skin hyperextensibility, which means unusually stretchy skin. People with SPEDS typically have short stature and may also have delays in motor development. Spondylodysplastic EDS belongs to a group of 13 related but separate genetic connective tissue disorders known as the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes. The hypermobile subtype of EDS, which is the type that I have, is by far the most common, accounting for about 90% of all EDS cases. The spondylodysplastic subtype is extremely rare and accounts for less than 1% of all EDS cases and has a prevalence of less than 1 in a million people. SPEDS is caused by genetic variants found on the B4GALT7, B3GALT6, and SLC39A13 genes. These genetic variants negatively affect the way the body produces connective tissue, which provides support, protection, and structure throughout the body. Spondylodysplastic EDS is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern. Autosomal means the condition can be passed on and inherited equally by males and females. Recessive means the condition only occurs when both copies of a gene are affected by pathogenic variants. People with SPEDS will always pass on one pathogenic variant to their children. Their children will only have SPEDS if they inherit a second pathogenic variant on the same gene from the other parent. People with one recessive pathogenic variant are known as carriers. Carriers do not have the condition themselves, but may pass the pathogenic variant onto their children. Spondylodysplastic EDS is diagnosed through genetic testing, and genetic testing should be considered on anyone who meets the diagnostic criteria for SPEDS. To meet the diagnostic criteria for SPEDS, a person must meet major criterion 1 and major criterion 2 and have characteristic radiographic abnormalities and at least two other minor criteria, either general or gene-specific. Major criterion 1 is the presence of short stature. Major criterion 2 is low muscle tone, and major criterion 3 is the presence of bowed limbs. The five general minor criteria include the presence of skin hyperextensibility, soft doughy skin, and thin translucent skin, flat feet, delayed motor development, osteopenia, which is low bone density, and delayed cognitive development. There are also several gene-specific minor criteria, but the lists for the three separate gene-specific minor criteria are quite extensive, and this is meant to be a short introductory video, so we won't cover those specifically, but please check out the full list on the Ehlers-Danlos Society website at www.ehlers-danlos.com slash speds if you're interested. Because spondylodysplastic EDS is a genetic disorder that you're born with, there is no cure, but there are many treatment options available. SPEDS is managed by treating the various symptoms that each individual is experiencing. There's no one-size-fits-all treatment. Key aspects of care focus on physical therapy and monitoring for bone density and cardiovascular issues. Treatment options to help manage the many symptoms of SPEDS may include medication, pain management, joint bracing, mobility aids, surgery, and physical therapy. And this concludes my rare subtype series. Next up, I plan to finally get around to video topics that viewers have requested, such as what I eat in a day, my exercise routine, and a hair and makeup routine chronic illness edition. If you have any video topics that you'd like me to cover, please let me know down in the comment section. If you thought this video was helpful, please click on the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and don't worry, it's completely free. 
If you click on the notification bell icon, you'll be notified when I release new videos. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.